I'm gonna, probably going to mix it up. I'm just going to give a talk for about 10 minutes eh, because we have more for other panels and probably we're going to have some Q&A after that. I would like to invite all my astronaut friends here. We have Soyan from Korea, the first female Korean astronaut. We have Kakaido, the one of the Japanese astronauts working for United Nations. And my very good friend Yang Li Wei, the Chinese Thai Konon. Yeah, a very good friend of mine. Well, cosmonauts are Russians, astronauts are American, Thai Konon are Chinese, and Angkasa One is the word used for a Malaysian to go to space. We started in 2003, where we opened up to the public. Tun Mahali at that time wanted to show to the world what Malaysia is all about. Even though Malaysia is a small, tiny nation, are able to compete with the rest of the world. Are able to shout Malaysia Bone. So this is the objective of the Angkasawan program Negara. Wanted to prove that Malaysia can do it too. So we started in 2003, we opened up to the public. 11,425 candidates applied wanting to go to space. Many Malaysians wanting to go to space. But the criteria, your eyes must be perfect, 6 by 6. Your hearing must be perfect, your teeth. You can't even have any feelings in your teeth. You can't even have any operation scars on your body. That shows how strict and how rigid they are on selecting the first Angkasawan program. Because in space, the pressure is very, very high. There are chances that your teeth feelings might rupture. There are chances that your operation scars might rupture, even though it has done for the past 5 to 10 years. The question is, why do people go to space? Why do we spend billions and billions of dollars wanting to go to space? We have to pay 25 million US dollars sending a Malaysian for a 12-day duration in space. But this is an offset program where Malaysia bought 18 Sukhoi jets from the Russians. In return, the Russian gave us one free seat for a Malaysian to go to space. If you want to send the next Malaysian to space, we have to pay 25 million US dollars. Things are definitely very, very expensive. Space is the next frontier. Everyone is looking at space for the next frontier. The Japanese are building hotels in space by the year 2017, meaning that in six years from now, we're going to have hotels in space. And you can actually spend your honeymoon in space for five to six days and come back down. Richard Branson is launching his space tourism, and you have to pay only 200,000 US dollars for a five minute duration in space. You just go up for space for five minutes and come back down for 200,000 US dollars. So things are getting much, much cheaper. Space should be accessible to everyone. I definitely say that everyone should go to space because I had the best time of my life in space. I didn't want to come back. I was there only for 12 days. I wish I could have stayed longer in space. The Russians, the Americans, they stayed for six months in space conducting many, many research. And it was the best magnificent ever of my life in space. I'm just going to show you some of the slides. And I'm just, am I talking too fast? No. You know, since I got back from space, since I got back to Earth, I feel that I'm moving at a very fast rate. I feel that everyone is very slow around me. So that's the reason why I'm speaking at a very fast speed. So the objective of the space is dreams are possible. I wanted to go to space since I was 10 years old. I remember looking up to the stars, looking up to the sky, wanting to know what is life out there. My room is filled with planets and the moon and the sun and the stars. I love Star Trek, I love Star Wars, I love Superman. So after 25 years, I finally achieved my dream. So this is a message I'm trying to reach out to everyone out there, especially the younger children, the young children out there, because it's easy to mold their mind. It's very hard for me to change the mindset of the, of the adults, because most of them have a fixed mind. So I've been focusing on kids, on kids, on kids, because they're very young, they're very innocent, and it's very easy to mold their mind, hoping that they don't have to become astronauts, but be doctors, be scientists, be aerospace engineers hoping that in 5 to 10 years from now, Malaysia will have a developed nation who have more doctors, more scientists, and more aerospace engineers. So part of our train is we went to Siberia. The temperature was minus 45 degrees Celsius, and it was very, very, very tough. I remember I had to chop down woods every 45 minutes just to make sure that my body generates heat. We come from a country of Malaysia, which is very hot and very humid. When we were sent to Siberia for minus 45 degrees, we were tremblingly cold. This is part of our training in Siberia, Russia. And we were also placed in the Soyuz. The Soyuz is very small, it's very, very tiny. The Soyuz belongs to the Russians. The, the shuttle belongs to the American. The Soyuz can fit only three people at one time, but the shuttle is huge. It can fit seven people at one time. The, Soyuz, the shuttle lands requires a runway, so it requires like a normal plane. But the Soyuz, when it lands, it lands as a free fall, so it, it is more challenging to be in a Soyuz. You cannot be too tall to go inside a Soyuz to go to space. The shorter you are, the better for you to go to space in a Soyuz Russian capsule. 
your height from your vortex till your coccyx bone should not be more than 99 centimeter. So mine is 96 centimeter. I was saved by 3 centimeter. So I always tell all yang pendek-pendek tu, yang ketok-ketok tu, bolehlah memohon untuk angkasawan yang kedua. Eh. The shorter you are, much, much better. Eh. Yang ketok-ketok tu. So this is part of training in uh, in the Black Sea and Ukraine. We had to train for three days floating in the Black Sea of Ukraine. Why do we do all this? Because there are chances that the Soyuz might have a ballistic re-entry, might have a ballistic landing. So normally the Soyuz lands exactly within 10 km radius where it's supposed to land because everything is based on calculation. But when if there is an emergency, it's very important for the astronauts to survive for at least three days before the rescue team comes in. This is actually the centrifuge where the Russians have the biggest centrifuge in the world where you can feeding two people at one time. I remember they push you in a centrifuge for at a very fast speed up to 9 Gs. Do you know what 9 G means? 9 G means nine times your body weight <coughs> pressing on your chest. If we are on Earth, how many Gs are we on Earth? Cita berapa G kat Malaysia kat Bumi? 1 G. Ha, 3 G. 1. 1 G. Yeah, we are 1 G here. If you go on the roller coaster, it's 1.5 G. If you go on the Formula 1, Ferrari, there's 3 G. So if you're in the centrifuge, you go up to 9 Gs, meaning 9 times your body weight pressing on your chest and you just cannot breathe like a baby elephant pressing on your chest and it's very difficult for you to breathe. So we've been trained to strain and strain and strain because blood do not go to your brain. So every time you strain, your muscles pump up your blood and your blood will go to your brain. So every 3 seconds, we have to strain and strain and strain. I remember after completing 9 Gs, breathing spots came out all over our body because of the rupture of the capillary. So it's very straining on our centrifuge training. So this is the aero chamber. We were brought up to 27,000 feet without oxygen to see how strong and how powerful your lungs are. So it's very important for astronauts to have a very strong, powerful lung. So do not smoke. Jangan merokok. Sekiranya anda ingin pergi ke angkasa lepas. This is our spinning chair. This is my favorite. In Russia, we will, we will place on a spinning chair every day for 20 to 25 minutes to make sure you do not vomit, you do not have any headache, you do not have any giddiness. So this is to train the astronauts before they are allowed to go to space to help them to adapt to the microgravity environment. This is the mock-up of the Soyuz which you have in Russia. So everything has to be trained inside the mock-up of the Soyuz because once you are in space, once you are in the International Space Station, you need to know how to work on the equipment. You have to know everything before you're allowed to go up. 10 of October 2007, this is my launch. It has been four years since I went to space, but it seems that yesterday I was in space. We were launched from Baikonur, Kazakhstan. Why Baikonur? Because Baikonur is the most strategic location to launch a rocket. Just like Florida is the best place to launch a rocket in America. In Malaysia, kat mana tempat yang paling strategic untuk pelancaran rocket? Okay, I'll see. Kat mana tempat paling sesuai? Hmm, Tawau, yeah. Tawau Sabah is the best place to launch a rocket in Malaysia. So this is what we are planning, hoping to do in 10 years from now. So we will launch from Baikonur, Kazakhstan. It takes us 8 minutes and 48 seconds to reach space. Anything above 100 kilometers is space. And we orbit the Earth for 2 days before we drop on the International Space Station, ISS. This is the ISS, International Space Station, which belongs to the Russian, the American, the Japanese, the Canadian, and 14 European countries, which always orbit at the height of 400 kilometers from, from Earth. It's not very far away. If you look at the internet, you can actually see what time the ISS passes by Malaysia. And if Malaysia has a bright sky, you can actually see a bright light passing by at a very fast speed in space. So people do not go to the moon anymore. No one goes to the moon anymore. Many people ask me, Dr. Sheikh, mana batu-batu bulan, mana sebut-sebut bulan dan sebagainya. We do not go to the moon anymore. Neil Armstrong was the first man who went to the moon in 1969. In fact, 12 people have landed on the moon, but there's nothing on the moon. So we decided to go to Mars now in the year 2027. It's going to take six months to go to Mars, six months to stay, and six months to come back by the year 2027. So this is the biggest obstacle when people go to Mars. So this is the Soyuz, it drops on the International Space Station. And this is the view when you look at from the International Space Station. The first time when I look at Earth from the International Space Station, I get goosebumps. My, all my hair, my body goes up. My heart doesn't beat. My eyes doesn't blink. Looking at how beautiful, how magical the Earth is. Such a wonderful, you can feel how close spiritually you are to the Creator. You can see how small and how tiny the Earth is, surrounded by billions and billions of galaxies. You can see the mountains, you can see the 
you polish them from space, you can see the, the rivers, but you cannot see man-made buildings from space. You cannot see Great Wall of China from space. You cannot see KLCC from space because it's just too far away. But we have lots of equipment up there which we study the Earth, which we study the geography, and we send them to Earth hoping to make the world a better space to live in. Okay, I'm cutting it short. So this is part of my experiments in space. I brought some cancer cells, I brought some protein, I brought some bacteria to space, hoping to find a cure for cancer. And these are the food in space, and this is how we eat, we let it float, and we ngap, ngap, ngap in space. And this is one of the experiments we did, and this is how we sleep in space, in the sleeping bag, and dengan bangganya membawa jalur gemilang ke angkasa lepas. This is how we drink, we just press and just pops to your mouth. And this, we actually have a food warmer in space, where they actually warm up your food in space. And I also brought our Quran in space. There's a few questions on how we pray in space. Because every 45 minutes, the sun rises. Every 45 minutes, the sun sets. So the question is, how do we pray in space? So there's a few fatwa that Jakim actually brought up and to show to the world how prayers are done in space. This is our tea bag. We have coffee, we have tea, we drink using a straw. This is the toilet. Yeah? How do we go to the toilet in space? And we have to be very careful when we go to the toilet in space because it might be floating around on board the International Space Station. <laughs> so we actually use a vacuum suction. And this is how we land and so on. So this is just a shot of my presentation. It was the best time of my life. I wish I could go to space again. I would die for space. This is my passion. I wanted to do this from a very, very, very young age. If I'm given a chance to go to Mars on a one-way ticket and not coming back, just go on a one-way ticket, I would go. I would do anything for space. I would die for space. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.